Remember when we talked about how during World War I, the Germans increased their currency supply by 400%, yet there was no price inflation because of the public's anxiety over the war and the uncertainty of their future? Imagine the anxiety 75 million baby boomers will feel as they approach retirement only to find their homes and their mutual funds are now worth next to nothing. The nest egg, ladies and gentlemen, has just cracked. When they get their tax rebates, are they going to buy that new big screen TV and the latest cell phone? I think not. I think they're going to save every dime they can get their hands on, just like in Germany during the war. But there will be a point at which a threshold is reached. For each income class it will be different. It will be the point where they feel that they've finally got enough saved for retirement. For some it will be $100,000, for others it will be $1 million, and for others still it will be $10 million. The Fed knows there is a point where they'll finally feel safe enough to replace that aging computer and maybe get that new TV. At this point, the boys at the Fed will buy enough government debt to fund tax rebates for all the taxes in the previous year, but still, nobody will buy that new car. The threshold the Fed is looking for will not be reached. Then, in not-so-quiet desperation, the Fed will say, screw the helicopters, send in the bombers. And as the shadow of millions of stealth currency bombers darken the skies, currency will begin to fall like rain in the desert. As Joe Sixpack and John Q get tax rebate checks in the mail for all the taxes they paid during their entire lifetimes, fear will be temporarily alleviated and some of that currency will come out of hiding just as in Weimar, Germany. Prices will rise quickly and dramatically as all that stored up currency energy is released. In a panic, the Fed will call back the bombers, but it will be too late. There's nothing they will be able to do to stop it now because the hyperinflation will have already begun. The Dow will begin an invisible crash of epic proportions and gold prices will shoot to the moon. If you were wise enough to moor your boat in the safe harbors of gold and silver and other commodities, you will weather the storm. It won't be pretty, but at least you'll be safe. At this point, confidence in the currency will fall faster than it can be created. Cost of living increases for government employees and the costs of all government projects, the subcontractors, the labor, the materials, will all skyrocket. And each time more currency is created to pay for the increases, the value of the currency will fall even faster. In times like that, governments have only two choices. Shut down the government and all of its projects and services, send everybody home without pay, turn off the printing presses, and wait for the free market system to discover price levels that account for the quantity of the currency in the supply. Or, print the currency into oblivion. Governments have always chosen the latter. But the stored up energy of excess currency creation doesn't have to take place within the United States and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the future. In fact, there is an abundance of stored up currency just waiting to be released right now. As I mentioned earlier, all the dollars we sent overseas to other countries to buy their goods and services are now sitting in their bank accounts, just waiting to be spent. Eventually, the world economy will lose faith in the U.S. dollar and will want to dump it by buying up goods. And as all those dollars come flooding back into the U.S., it will, of course, cause the prices of those goods and services to rise and could, and probably will, trigger a scenario much like the one I have just finished describing. Throughout history, economists have suffered from what I like to call this time syndrome. This time, they've become masters of the economic universe. This time, they've figured it out. This time, they've tamed the economy. This time, they've mastered the art of infinite currency amplification. This time, a fiat currency will work. 
History gives this a probability of zero. Each time we sailed toward economic doom, the greatest financial minds in the world were at the helm. Do you really think we should continue letting them steer the ship? I think not. It would be nice uh, if we started listening to people that have been right rather than the people that have theories. Uh, and it would be great if they would allow the free market to work, but that's not the way it's going to happen. The people that have the theories will continue to rule and uh, we will vote for people that don't know what they're doing. And uh, so the best that we can do is try to protect ourselves and even you know, potentially benefit from government and economists' stupidity. Uh, and so the way to do that is by learning as much as you can about what's happening and developing your own opinions on what is coming at you rather than being reactionary. So how is this all going to play out? You know, I don't know exactly, but what I do know is that the longer this goes on, the bigger it's going to be. And I wrote about uh, the pos some of the possibilities in my book. Uh, and this was written before the crisis of 2008. And so uh, in here, I refer to Ben Bernanke, but I'm going to change that to just the Federal Reserve or central banks for you right now. So, the day of reckoning will come when millions of baby boomers reach the age where they have to take mandatory distributions from their IRAs. As they find that the investments they were counting on for their retirement, their homes and their IRAs full of mutual funds, have actually lost value, that the amount of stuff that they can buy from the proceeds if they sell their home is actually less than when they bought their home. And as they realize that their dream of a comfortable retirement was just that, a dream, all those boomers will get scared and pull in their horns. They will stop spending. They will start selling off their assets and the greatest stock market crash in history will unfold as more and more boomers panic and sell. I believe this will also be accompanied by the greatest real estate crash the world has ever known. This perfect storm of bankruptcies and foreclosures will cause the currency supply to contract as the giant credit bubble pops and all those big spenders become big savers. When people save their currency, it stops circulating. The economic engine runs out of oil and the whole thing locks up. This is every central banker's worst nightmare. This is real deflation. And the world's central bankers are about to discover the true scale of the horrors of a credit bubble implosion. When this happens, the Federal Reserve will once again send out its armada of money bomb dropping helicopters, but this time something will be different. Something will have gone horribly wrong. The bombs will have been defused. The Fed will try pumping the banking sector by buying up every kind of debt they can get their hands on, but to no avail. They will go to the extraordinary measures that they had said they were prepared to go to. They will buy every mortgage, mortgage-backed security, and any other type of debt that panicky investors and banks are trying to sell, but nothing good will come of it. They will start buying stocks to buoy the stock market, but retail sales will continue to plunge. They will try broad-based tax cuts, but it won't jumpstart the economy. They will work with foreign central banks to buy each other's debt, but the global economy will continue to plummet people will finally see through the veil. They will see what Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Lion, and the Tin Man saw. That the Wizard of Oz is really just some dopey old guy frantically pulling levers. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70. In the traditional financial system, 
and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where do you invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof. To the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.